we got such crooked people in office, people that won't even come on this show, but they want my vote. But they won't come on my show and let me answer questions. I'll say six judges in this county right now, this election, June primary. I want all those judges to come on and answer questions. I want to ask them why they didn't demand, because they're an officer of the court, that Tom Snedden be indicted for falsifying evidence in the Michael Jackson trial. And I was a witness. I was right there in the courtroom, watched him get caught, false fingerprints evidence, the phone, print, the phone evidence that they tried to create to say there was a conspiracy and had all these phone charges, half a day on that. Then Snedden wanted to withdraw it from the evidence pool in the court. No. The defender, Tom Mesro, said, that stays on. Judge said, you're right. It's already been entered. It stays. And the jury looked at all this false evidence and said, there's no way we can convict this guy. We got a pile of crap from Tom Snedden. Now, Tom Snedden's probably endorsed you, hasn't he? Uh, no. I know Tom. I know kind of briefly. I didn't... I Never was really that close because I was obviously. A, Did you he wash? Was a, you he wash was an elected your, official, and I was, you know. You wash your hands after shaking his hand. I mean, this guy literally falsified evidence, I, I don't and see. it's on the record. He, and he, there's millions of Jackson fans hate Santa Barbara County. Yeah. See, I'm not aware of any of this, though, so William. Oh, I know. This is but, way beyond your film. But, but um, I've always, I've always had good. Thoughts of Tom? I always thought he was a very honorable, I did, a good DA. I did too. So I'm he, not aware he, of any he of this. Put, Tom Snedden put some bad people in jail that needed to be in jail. I think I, th I think he was a successful DA. Well, he, I know successful DAs that were crooks too. Uh, but this thing what he did to Michael Jackson was so beyond the pale of forgiveness. I have to say, in my and I know this won't make me popular with Gordy Squawk and Auchincloss. And Ron Zonin and that old bunch of DAs, and certainly not Dudley uh, or Josh Lynn, but I believe Tom, uh, Tom Snedden should be serving time in prison. And that's where he should be getting his, he'll have lots of money in his prison account getting his pension, but he should be in prison. You cannot falsify evidence and then just say, oh, we lost the case. No, no. He had that boy put his fingerprints on the magazine at the grand jury. And the reason we know that, because the alert Tom Mesero, the defense attorney, got the grand jury transcript. And one of the grand jurors said, shouldn't that boy be wearing gloves? Then after the grand jury, they sent it out for fingerprints analysis. So where did the boy get his fingerprint on the magazine when the boy testified he hadn't even been at Neverland for months when that magazine was published. Yet he claimed that was the magazine Michael Jackson gave him in bed. And Tom Snedden directed all that testimony. He falsified. Now, if he was a new DA, if he was green behind the ears, and he just got elected DA, and he made a stupid mistake, like giving the evidence to a boy, and then sending it out, fingerprint evidence with no gloves on, I would say, okay, he made a mistake. He's a greenhorn. He didn't know what he was doing. We can let it go. But 25 years? 25 years? That's like saying if we find uh, five years from now that somebody in your office had been uh, pilfering money one way or another, and we say, well, we're just going to forgive him because they worked so many years in the office. We're going to just let it go. Never. We would never forgive him. Well, neither should we forgive Tom Snedden. The man should be doing time in jail. And I look at the well, trial. But, but he should have the, the benefit of a trial. Of course he gets a trial. Of course he gets a trial. And we bring on the, on the record, we bring the record from the Tom, uh, the Michael Jackson trial and say, here it is, jury. The man is guilty of sin. And we lay it out. We lay out the grand jury's transcript. And there it is. And put that Tom Snedden in prison. He needs to do some hard time. Just because you put bad guys it's like saying if a cop stopped 10 bad guys from robbing Mr. Hagen's house, and every year these bad guys come to rob you, and the cops show up, and, and they stop them. But one year... I'd be very happy. Of course you would be happy. <laughs> but if the same cop came back one day and said, well, you know, I think I should rob Mr. Hagen, and he shoots Mr. Hagen and takes your money. Now I wouldn't be happy. Right, exactly. It's my <laughs> point. That's exactly my point. Now do we say, well, the cops stopped all these bad guys for 10 years, so we'll just give them a free pass this one time. No, that's not the way it works. It's, that's right. That's not the, the way it works. That's not the works. way the American system works. Exactly. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. I wanted to get your agreement. Tom Snedden should be in prison because well, the evidence is there. I, that's not what I agree to, William. <laughs> Did I get you? Did I suck you in there, Mr. Hagan? <laughs> all right. I know you didn't agree to that. 
Uh, <laughs> I know you. I just pulling a little fast with I know you are. I mean, people won't if we get too dry about exactly. numbers. You gotta, you, people you, you will turn out. Start turning the channel, right? Yeah, they'll right. they'll go to another Actually, channel. Hit and the I, buttons. I, I want to give you the last three minutes here before we go to tape. We have an interesting tape, people. I promised you. Remember the six judges that are not being opposed because they, the gang of criminals known as the Bar Association has written the laws. It wasn't this way when California was created 160 years ago, plus. But about 90 years ago, they changed the laws. They brought in the Bar Association. And then they said, oh, Mr. Hagan can't run for judge, no matter how much experience he got. We, you have to be a member of the Bar for 10 years. That was never the intention of the Republic of California when it was founded. They have corrupted the entire system. Now we got all six judges. This June primary will not even be seen on the ballot. They're automatically reelected. Listen to what I said. Automatically reelected, and you didn't even vote for one of them. All they had to go out and get 25, 35 signatures, pay a 1% fee of their salary, their monthly salary, and boom, they're on, automatically reelected. But I couldn't run against him. Cassandra couldn't run against him. Mr. Hagen couldn't run against him. For a salary that pays $171,000 a year plus bennies? And nobody can run against him except approved. And now they do a meet and greet and watch this. All the questions are written down and a bar association person screens them. And listen to what this first newly, first she was appointed a commissioner. Now she's been appointed a judge. She's never been elected. Colleen Stern, listen to this first two, three minutes. We'll go to that, and maybe we'll be back with Mr. Hagan. I want to give him three minutes to, to make his closing campaign statement. I want to give him time to get his thoughts together. We'll go to tape. Be back. For example, um, a retirement that's timed in a particular way that the governor is not able to appoint, and the seat is open, and people run for it, and they become elected. But once you've been elected, you have to run every six years. If people file against you, then you end up having to run and protect your seat as an incumbent elected official, just like any other elected official. The other way that people become- I want to ask him why they didn't demand, because they're an officer of the court, that Tom Snedden be indicted for falsifying evidence in the Michael Jackson trial. William Wagoner, our next speaker, and we're going to go to Santa Barbara for Jeff Bard. Good morning, Supervisors. I'm William Wagner. I was here two years ago, and Peter Adams wasn't on the board yet, and I came with a big bag of letters from people around the world that were asking you to do justice, where the justice system itself has failed. My point is, I'm here to ask you specifically to appoint a special prosecutor to review the sworn affidavit I gave you two years ago and handed to the clerk when I was done, stating, in fact, that Mad Dog, as he's called affectionately before he retired, Thomas Snedden, Gordon Auchincloss, Ron Zonin, and Magna Cola be indicted for fabricating evidence and committing three felonies in the trial that concluded on June 13th, nine years ago, against Michael Jackson, a completely innocent, black, and very talented man who resided in this county at a place known as a Sycamore Ranch or Neverland Ranch. These four prosecutors committed felonies in fabricating evidence, and it was exposed by Thomas Mesereau and Susan Yu. The defenders in court and the all-white jury acquitted this very black and talented man, a very charitable and innocent man, of all ten felonies, and the later included misdemeanors. How could that happen and not anybody know that the prosecutors committed felonies? I have zero confidence in the Santa Barbara District Attorney's Office because Christine, the late Christine Stanley, 
where I predicted to her she would not live to see the end of her first term, and she didn't, because she would not indict Tom Snedden, her close friend and bosom buddy. And Joyce Dudley continues in the same methodology that you can't indict official for committing of felonies. Really? Wasn't Richard Nixon impeached for a lot less than fabricating evidence in a courtroom? Because you failed to appoint that special prosecutor, now we have, we have these brazen people, Jimmy Safechuck and Wade Robson, now claiming the exact opposite, that they were molested by Michael Jackson. Because you didn't do your job. You're the alternative when the justice system fails. Indict these four criminals. They are unindicted criminals. And they need to be indicted, and you need to appoint a special prosecutor, or you need to indict Wade Robson for committing perjury. Why hasn't Joyce Dudley indicted this young man for committing perjury? Either he lied in 05, or he's lying now. Either way, he committed perjury. So why isn't Santa Barbara's district attorney, Joyce Dudley, chaffing at the bit to Mr. put- Wagner, you're half a minute over to put Wade Robson in jail for perjury. Thank you for your consideration, and I hope you move on this, set it for the agenda. Thank you. We're gonna to go to Senate Barber for Jeff Barr and <coughs> Dr. Robert Jones. Uh, good morning, Supervisor. I'm Dr. Robert L. Johns, PhD clinical psychologist, researcher, very fabulous researcher. What I've found is, and I've listened to this very carefully, uh, uh, Mr. Wagner's comments, and uh, I just want you to know, Mr. Wagner and supervisor, I've found Tom Snedden to be a super racist and a Nazi. Snedden is very much a part of why the Nazis are in this county right now, why the Nazis have been manipulating this county board. Now, Carter Hall Central issue here is, when did you know about these Nazis and Snedden? Well, you knew about it when you came aboard because I told you about it. Now, Snedden, you need to come before this board and face me, and I'm calling myself now the black Nazi hunter. Now, uh, and you can laugh at that, and Carter Hall laughed at me in 05, 06. And look where we are now, Carnival Hall. Keep laughing. Now, these Nazis, the descendants of the Camp Cook Nazis, that's what they are, and they are the youth group for they are the Senate, you know, is that Veterans Association? Those are Nazis. The way there is, and I would commend them to this board. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker is Dr. Robert Jones. Uh, good morning, Supervisor. I'm Dr. Robert L. Jones, PhD clinical psychologist, researcher, very fabulous researcher. What I've found is, and I've listened to this very carefully, uh, uh, Mr. Wagner's comments, and uh, I just want you to know, Mr. Wagner and Supervisor, I found Tom Snedden to be a super racist and a Nazi. Snedden is very much a part of why the Nazis are in this county right now, and why the Nazis have been manipulating this county board. Now, Carter Hall Central issue here is, when did you know about these Nazis and Snedden well, you knew about it when you came aboard because I told you about it. Now, Smith, you need to come before this board and face me, and I'm calling myself now the black Nazi hunter. Now, uh, and you can laugh at that. And Carver Hall laughed at me in 05, 06. And look where we are now, Carver Hall. Keep laughing. Now, these Nazis, the descendants of the Camp Cook Nazis, that's what they are, and they are the youth group for they are the Senate, you know, is that Veterans Association? 
those are Nazis, and they have no right to the land that they grow grapes on. All that profit belongs to the Chimash, and that's why they fight so because they know that eventually they're going to have to give up that land. And I call on a Chumash to call in all your chips, and so let's send these Nazis, either by and far, to the Red States. They'd love them there. Now, Wolf, you are a child of the Holocaust. And I'll tell you something. You have given up your own faith and your own people. And you manipulate your own people by bringing him a, a few months ago before this board and presenting him with a reward while you work with the Nazi Eva Braun Farr. Carvajal, you should be ashamed of yourself. We know they brought you here aboard to keep your own people in check. That's right, in check. Now, I have about 35 seconds, so let me end up with this. As I call myself the black Nazi hunter, and I want these Nazis out of the San Diego Valley, I'm going to write a letter to the Attorney General, California, the Attorney General, United States, Homeland Security, the governor. I don't want to expose you Nazis, and I want you out of the valley. Thank you, supervisors. Supervisor Carvalho. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, a number of um, my constituents that spoke about the dangerous dog ordinance uh, are here today. And I was wondering if um, Dr. Wada and CEO Mia Sato might perhaps touch on um, the process that I think we've embarked on to bring to this board um, uh, some options for modifying that ordinance. And also, there's an update on the, um, the euthanasia um, issues surrounding the animals that uh, were touched on. Uh, Duke and Daisy, I understand. Uh, it, it might be good for not just them, but other interested individuals that are watching to just uh, understand what the county is doing uh, in this regard. So. CEO Miyasaka. Supervisors, I'd like to, on the county council, provide some information on the legal framework before Dr. Wada speaks about the process. Chair Levinino and Supervisors, um, in the area of dangerous and vicious dogs, uh, the county uh, code in Chapter 7 addresses the county's process, uh, which is consistent with state law, especially because state law in Food and Agriculture Code, Section 31683, authorizes the state to, quote, impose a more restrictive program, end quote, than the states to control potentially dangerous or vicious dogs. So when the, the board ultimately considers amendments to its current dangerous dog ordinance, it will have uh, policy discretion as to keeping its current uh, program or adding more options to that, and either of those choices would be consistent uh, with state law. We received uh, public comment this morning talking about uh, Food and Agriculture Code Section 31108B, uh, which is sometimes referred to as one of the Hayden Act amendments. And this is an area of the code that, as the public commenter uh, addressed, applies to stray dogs impounded, uh, that they shall be offered to a nonprofit before being euthanized. Uh, and we have looked at this issue uh, previously, and we believe that Section 31108B, when it uh, uses the word, the term stray dog, means stray dog, not dogs seized after biting uh, or dogs abandoned by an owner. But again, the, the board will have some discretion um, in this area when it considers the amendments. As to the recent uh, dangerous dog hearings involving the dogs Duke and Daisy, um, on August 20th, the county received the Superior Court's written judgment ordering that those dogs be humanely destroyed. That followed a prior public health hearing on April 21st, 
in which the hearing officer received uh, evidence concerning three separate incidents of those dogs attacking and killing the cats, and with the hearing officer directing that the dogs be euthanized. The Superior Court's involvement was actually as an appeal of that uh, administrative hearing, and uh, the judgment has now been served on the dog's owners. So that's really the legal framework that we're operating with within, and we have been working closely with Public Health and its Division of Animal Services uh, to bring forward potential amendments to the county code as to potentially dangerous dogs, but those will be policy choices for the board. Your present ordinance is, is, is proper under state law. Um, just one more question before Ms. Wyatt goes. So the court reaffirmed the county's ability to proceed with uh, euthanasia as in, re in regards to those two animals. But although they reaffirmed the county's ability to move forward with that, that doesn't preclude us from considering other options. Uh, sure. Chair, let me answer Mr. Carvajal. That's correct. The, the court's judgment um, expressly directed the county to humanely destroy those dogs. Um, and noted that the decision is final in under state law, it's final and conclusive of the parties. That, however, does not preclude the county from after this uh, or at any time you know, in the future amending its uh, dangerous dog ordinance within the county code. Thank you, Dr. Water. Supervisor Carbajal, uh, through the chair, thank you very much. Um, as was mentioned by the uh, public speaker, Ms. Jansen, uh, County Animal Services is uh, looking at revising the Dangerous Dog Ordinance. Uh, we do have two uh, community forums next week. Uh, the first is September 3rd um, at 5.30 at the Public Health Department, San Antonio Road, uh, where we can get input from the community. Uh, we have a second here in North County on September 4th at the Foster Road County <coughs> Facility, also at 5.30. And this is an opportunity, again, for the public to provide comment and input into uh, revisions on the dangerous dog ordinance. Uh, we've also um, explored engaging a consultant uh, to come in and help us assess animal services and the shelter operations. Uh, and part of that assessment will also help us look at best practices for shelter and, and some of our other policies around dangerous dog. Uh, we anticipate coming back before the board in November with uh, a new uh, dangerous dog ordinance. Very good. Thank you very much, Dr. Walker. All right. Does that conclude our public comment for you? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to our administrative agenda. Let's take care of A1 first and get a motion to approve A1. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? Supervisor Park. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, it's certainly my honor uh, today to be able to present a resolution celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Black Gold Cooperative Library System. I'd like to call forward uh, Maureen Theobald, who's the Executive Director of Black Gold, and also Mary Housel, who's the Director of the Santa, uh, Santa Maria Library District, which includes the libraries of Guadalupe, Huerta, Santa Maria, and Cuyama. Um, Santa Barbara County has participated in, in the Black Gold uh, System uh, throughout the county. And um, because I have the privilege of being the board's appointee to the Library Advisory Committee, uh, I get the great fun of hearing about what's happening with our libraries routinely throughout the year. And when I heard that um, this great anniversary was going to be coming up, I thought, well, this is a great opportunity for uh, everybody to hear about the great work of Black Gold. I think if uh, you've been in the public library and, and have a card, um, you know what a tremendous resource this is. It stretches across three counties and makes available all of the materials from all of these libraries to uh, anybody that might want to access it. So um, I put the color of my scarf today in, in honor of the occasion. And um, Mr. Allen, would you please read the resolution? Chairman Lavinino, members of the board, this is a resolution celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Black Gold Cooperative Library System. Whereas the Black Gold Cooperative Library System began in 1964 to enhance library services to a million people in an 8,000 square mile area by providing services to member libraries. And whereas the Black Gold Cooperative Library System includes public libraries in the counties of San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura, including the Blanchard Community Library in Santa Paula, the Public Library, the Paso Robles Public Library, the San Luis Obispo.
What do you think of the idea of prosecuting Tom Snedden for falsifying fingerprint evidence, falsifying phone evidence, and the conspiracy between Ron Zonin and Tom Snedden to get Michael Jackson to I spoke to Tom Snedden when Michael died, and I said, Tom, I think it's time that we bury the hatchet and not be able to uh, talk to one another. That's, that's not good. And he said he would think about it. We haven't talked since. So he would I don't, think about it? He would think about it. So I don't know what, what really to say to answer that. I can tell you this. At the time, I was very upset at the Santa Barbara District Attorney. Really upset. Now that Michael has passed, I really don't know the answer to your question, except to say Michael never, ever touched this child. The case against him is absolutely nonsensical. Did you ever read the transcript after you left the trial? Oh, yes, I followed it greatly. Michael called me, we would talk about that case. Don't, on you, on. don't you think something went very wrong there when they falsified the fingerprint evidence that Tom Mesereau caught him and said, see the date on the magazine? You were last at Neverland Wind, and he got his fingerprints now that on, was, on the evidence that was, at the grand jury. That was my discovery. See, I got all the magazines. I went and I bought them. And uh, I think that was a Hustler magazine. And Larry Flint, personally, got me those magazines. And I met him at the Four Seasons Hotel. And he got me every single one of the Hustler magazines. And when I saw that magazine, and that the date was utterly impossible, it was after the so-called event. Right. Larry Flint and I sat there and we looked at this and I said, Larry, you, you have no idea what you've done for me. That was the magazine that disclosed the, the, that was the nonsense. The, that was the October issue, wasn't it? It was the October issue. Correct. October issue. And, and Gavin had said many times, on the stand, he had last been there, what, December, January? He was last there in March. March? And this magazine came out in October, and it was at the 04 grand, uh, grand Jury indictment. He got his fingerprints on. Now, let me ask you, you've been an attorney for how many years? 30 years. 30 years. And Tom Snedden has been a prosecutor for how many years? At least 25? Yes. Does an experienced prosecutor give the evidence to the boy with no gloves on? Never. But he did, didn't well, he? But you have to understand. He did that, didn't he? Yes, he did. So you he's have to understand, guilty. nobody, nobody figured that we would go, that I would go, and get the copy of the magazine. Because you see, when the evidence was turned over to us, all that was turned over was the photograph of the page. And unless you went and got the magazine itself, you couldn't tell that there was a date discrepancy. I got Larry Flint to get me that magazine. And I was the one who saw the date discrepancy. It takes hard dog work to expose fraud. So since an experienced prosecutor like Tom Snedden and Ron Zonin assistant prosecutor with many years of experience. That was premeditated planned, wasn't it? I'll leave that to everyone else to judge. Oh. I just know I just know it was wrong. And it was He it says it's wrong, but he won't say it was premeditated. Malice of forethought. I hear you. I hear you. But you won't say it, will you? No. Nah. Do you think a jury would if they indicted? If we probably, got an indictment? Probably. If a jury probably. looked, wouldn't they say Tom Snedden is guilty of premeditated evidence manufacturing? I'd have to listen to his defense first. <laughs> Spoken like a lawyer. <laughs> Spoken like a lawyer. This is what I said. You'll never get a lawyer to go after another lawyer. They won't do this. Not in this case. That's why we need a special grand jury. But thank you, Mr. Oxman. At least he agrees with me. The evidence was false. It was well, fake. It, it, it just didn't work right for the prosecution. <laughs> they got caught with their hands in the cookie jar. They sure did. Thank All you right. very much for that interview. You take care.